This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Are you married? No. Have you ever been? No. Would you like to be? Are you thrilled that you are not? Uh, well, then this is the podcast for you. I'm Jamie Alcroft, hey. working this week without a net. And today, net. on Things I Found Online, we explore marriage. The Truth About It, mm. with filmmaker Roger Nygaard, whose new film, The Truth About Marriage, takes a deep look at love, sex, couples, and yes, even marriage. There goes our rating. And joining us from the film are Rachel Hope, Linda Brown, and Doug Williams. Our panel includes the hilarious Danny Man. He's maritally elusive, but he's still Danny Man. <laughs> and this is where I gently toss to our host, Louise Palenker. Ooh, Ooh, easy. Easy. Thank you, Jamie. And yes, we are honored to be joined today by award-winning documentarian Roger Nygaard. Welcome, Roger. Woo! Hello. We. Woo! 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 Did you have we, to wear all your awards? Yeah. yeah. Just, oh, you, we found Roger virtual. online. Look, Connor clicks on link. Read stage direction out loud. He's online, and he's on Wikipedia, and he's on IMDb, and he's a very busy man. Roger Nygaard is a film director and producer. His credits include Tales of the Unknown, High Strung, Back to Back, Trekkies, and Suckers. He also yes. directed the grief counseling episode of The Office. Roger, your latest documentary, The Truth About Marriage, is being launched with a book by the same name on Valentine's Day. Was this a coincidence? No, there's no coincidence involved here at all. Right? There are no coincidences ever, <laughs> ever. So tell me which came first, the documentary or the book or Valentine's Day? My failure in relationships <laughs> this is what came first and wondering why, what's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's okay. what I was wondering. You but seem I, I fine. Need, I need to find out. So I sort of set out to, to solve this mystery. What am I doing wrong? Wait, well, wait a minute. We have to ask the big question. Are you married? No, I'm single. Never been married. So it's Never it's a single married. guy pontificating about marriage. Yes. <laughs> I thought I was the only one who did that. <laughs> it's like the Pope pontificating about birth control. Yeah, well, he similar. is the pontiff. He is. <laughs> Roger's film is Whatever richly stacked and layered with experts and couples who each share their unique views, research, beliefs, and experiences with love and marriage. Can you talk about the folks we will meet in the film, Roger? Yeah. Well... Part of what happened is I got invited to weddings and I would wonder, I wonder if these guys are going to make it <laughs> because the odds are kind of against, if it's a 50, it's like a coin flip, right? It's not great odds. And yeah, it's like I, watching horse racing. Yeah, the wife will kick off. <laughs> <laughs> Only three But most place. people don't place odds at the reception. Everyone thinks they're, they're, they're the oh. exception, right? We're not, not we're going to make it. We're great. Everything's perfect. And then you cut to two years later and what happens? That's my blender. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, here's a clue. Uh, catch the bouquet next time. Yeah. Works that, every that, time. Superstition. <laughs> so Whatever you it to, takes. Catch so that you, bouquet. you kind of went on a search and then brought your camera along with you. Like, I let started, me see what I can learn and film at the same time. Started bringing my camera to weddings and then asking the couples questions and hard questions. And then I checked back many years later to see, are they, I wonder what happened. You know, mm -hmm. And it was always a shock. How, what happened? It was never what I expected uh. for for people. No, there's some surprises in this film. There are people <laughs> that are married that you not know. The odds were not no. You could have made a lot of money. Right. What is your longest marriage on record that you have? Um, I think they're sitting right next to me. How long have you guys been married? Hey, first of all, can I just do this, man? Because uh, you left out my wife. Uh, you didn't say my. You got in. I didn't. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. person who wrote this. No, because well, she's not in the script. That, that's why we're still married. <laughs> He's sticking yeah, up for. My wife for... is here. Ate a loose plot. Uh, she said, "Don't mention I'm here." <laughs> but, uh, she said, "Don't tell anybody I was here today." Oh, okay. I thought she's... she was with me. Uh -huh. <laughs> she's a surprise celebrity cameo. Oh, okay, that's yes. Right. We were going to spring it on everybody. How long? Now, how long are you guys? Have you been married? We've been together probably. Probably about 24 years, and then we've been married, uh, which makes it legal so the government can get their cut. Yeah. Uh, 17 years? Six, six, uh, 16, 17 See, You're around. still yeah. arguing about the number, the, and you're arguing in the film about the number as well. <laughs> right. So. That's also like that classic line you ask people how long it's a 16 beautiful, wonderful years. Unfortunately, we've been married 24 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Roger, who else did you bring with us to this podcast from your movie? I brought one of my experts. I talked to uh, almost, I don't know, 15, 20 experts who I I, I needed help, right? They were, I they're sought in the out car, help. by the way. And I, I mean, brought they one. They don't fit in they, here. They <laughs> weren't in divorce. <laughs> we're full. <laughs> Rachel Hope is an author who yeah. coincidentally lived near me on the same block as me. And 
she had some kids, right? And I had a pool in the backyard, and I would let the neighborhood people use the pool when they wanted to. And she would come over, hey, can I use the pool? And so she brought her daughter and go swimming. And by the way, I happen to have written a book about parenting for people who are not married. And if you want to have a child but not be in a romantic relationship, this is the way to do it. No accident. I call it uncle. That's what I, that's what I am. <laughs> what do you call it, Rachel? It's called? A parenting partnership. Parenting partnership. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, before we dive too deeply further into the film, Jamie and Danny are going to talk about uh, what happened with their weeks because there's always adventure involved. And, and we've just been through Oscar weekend. Yes. So there's much to discuss. Please weigh in if you have thoughts or if it, what did I miss? Who won? I, that, well, I guess who won? Who won? Well, Danny comes with prepared I, I, just, I, it, it, material. It, it came to me during the show because yeah. Parasite was considered kind I, of an upset winner, yeah. and and as I watched that, I said, I, I said that was almost the giddiest and most euphoric I've ever seen a room full of people get from a bong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the name of the director. That's the name of the director. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. funny pun. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Good job, good. Danny. I noticed his name was Bong, too. It's a joke for film buffs. Just the it, way I go. Totally. It was kind yeah. of great because he had to just keep going up to the podium, and every trip he thought was his last trip, yeah. and he exhausted everything he knew. And the poor translator... Because she was oh, just... Oh, that was his translator? Oh, she was... I thought it was his wife. They and won so just... many awards by the end, I actually didn't need the translator. I no. was understanding Korean. We understood Korean, Korean. Korean. <laughs> yeah. <it> was... <laughs> he said yeah. drunk so many times that... <laughs> I thought it was a very well Then he'd go show. drink, and then he'd win again, and ask to stumble back up there. Yeah, I drink t- till next morning. He said till That's next morning. That's your Korean All accent? Right. And before it was we, for a maybe, minute. Just... But before we talk about the truth about marriage, I thought it would also be good to go around and establish everybody's marital status, whether it's single, married, it's complicated, or or what have you, so that you you know you, we know who we're talking. Now, Dan or Jamie, you're Jamie, right? Yes. You've been married be for, for, the for many many years to the same person. I've been married to the same person now uh, for thirty for years and when it says wow. marital status on the forms mm-hmm. i have to fill out i always write blissful Aww. Aww. because there is nothing wrong with fade our to black i mean how do you nothing wrong yeah. with our marriage no it's perfection i love you guys I'll find yeah we're thinking and, of having children soon yeah so yes. rachel you have never been married what how did you come upon uh, this decision to have children and just have it so that it's not you're not expecting so much from the person you're in love with it's instead it's like you're the dad I'm the mom let's not get too into the weeds about what else we're supposed yeah, to be in each other goes over partnership yeah I originally just wanted to avoid divorce and it seemed like marriage <laughs> led to that in most cases <laughs> so had you ever been married <laughs> marriage no. is the leading cause uh, yeah it's the leading cause and so I <laughs> yes, thought I really want an intact yeah I want an intact family. I didn't want my kids to go through a breakup, so I had kids with my best friend. I love that. So we're going to hear more about that in a moment. (laughs) Two different best friends. Two different best friends. Yes. They hate each other. They can't no. be yeah. best friends. And I'm about to do it again. And you're about to, oh, I, oh we have a lot to talk about. You're running out of hey, friends. Roger, not married. <laughs> no. Correct. Were you Single. ever close? Three times I was in um, I was in love with somebody and imagining, yeah, I, you know, I could imagine we'll be living together, we'll maybe we'll have kids and et cetera. Had you introduced yourself to them And <laughs> disaster. It was disaster yeah, it was by disaster. the time. Okay. Uh, you introduced yeah, yourself. Yeah. Okay. We had, we had been uh, having sex, so I hope so. <laughs> okay. Yes. True. Doug, this uh, is- how long, you guys have been married a long time. Yeah, we've been married uh, about we, seven, uh, 16 and 17. 16, yeah, I just, just want to say, sure. say real quick, that's beautiful that you open your pool up to just the community. Like, where I'm I from, know. you don't open your <laughs> well, pool up. But how else is he going to meet yeah. women? It's beautiful, man. Right, look what happened. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> she came it's over beautiful. in a swimsuit. If you become her best friend, you may have children together. <laughs> Danny never married, ever so, close. In a nutshell, uh, uh, my parents were married 60-some-odd years, very, very happy. They had four boys. Uh... I've never been married. My brother, Ron, has been married three times. Uh, my brother, Rick, has never been married. My brother, Jeff, has been married three times. So my parents actually got their wish. They had, they had you know, six weddings. Yeah, six weddings. Out of four yeah. boys. Four of you. So they, yeah. came, they came out ahead. But, good uh, odds. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it skips a generation or but something. But were you ever close? Um, yes. But not, not in terms of long-term relationship, but in terms of someone... That you would have yeah, married. Yeah, I, I thought I was in love a number of times. You right. almost so, mm-hmm. lost your house. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, t- I, t- I, t- I have to say this line because this is another one. Rod Stewart, <laughs> who's been married many, many times and had children with a number of other people, he has a great line. He says, instead of getting married again, I'm going to mm-hmm. find a woman I don't like and just give her a house. 
That was actually <laughs> something. I'm going to look I love that, that up. That's you know, what, Alan Wankus, yeah. our friend Alan Wankus, yeah. he always, when you would ask him, you know, why he's not married, he would say, well, I'm skipping my first marriage. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, so, a, like a starter house. You're going to just yeah. go right to the main yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my com- yeah. my com- comedy partner used to call his ex-wife his practice wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because you got wheels. it right the second time. <laughs> he called her training wheels, lovingly. <laughs> yeah. uh, but let's watch the trailer from well, uh, The Truth About Marriage. My parents had a trailer. Is that the truth? We all know the statistics. Marriage rates are down, divorce rates are high, and over time, people become more and more dissatisfied in their relationships. Why are relationships so hard for people? 69% of problems that couples struggle with are perpetual problems. We call each other the work in progress. It's pretty much what our marriage has been. It is the work in progress. I do the work and she makes the progress. Ah. Yeah. How much are people cheating on each other sexually? 10% of children don't belong to their father, on average. Are you allowed to get a massage with a happy ending? <laughs> would that be cheating? I'm pretty sure I'm not, uh, but I'm not. Oh, I think if you asked, I would say yes, you can do that. I think if you were in Thailand are and you, you said... Are you kidding me? I was just in Thailand. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't ask. You should have asked if you had asked. Oh. Almost 0% of engaged people think they are ever going to get divorced. Women's criteria for what they find attractive in men changes depending upon where they are in their menstrual cycle. Couples should go off the pill for at least a year before they make any long-term commitments because they might not be compatible. How did you get Jordan to commit to you? Uh, I told him he could do whatever he wanted with anybody else. That broke me. She ran. I chased her. She caught me. Who's the boss more often than not in a relationship? Women. The woman. Women. I have absolute say at the end, but I don't say anything. You have conned us, man. Have conned us into thinking we're on earth for you. You're on earth for us and the kids. And if you do a good job, will keep you alive when you're an old fart. I'm so in love with her. <laughs> ah, that is awesome. It's Dr. Pat Allen. I fantastic. like, yeah, I like the fake Garrett Morris thing. <laughs> yeah. Tonight, so, top story. <laughs> so did, what, did you find more than you were looking for? Because I'm, I'm also a documentary filmmaker. Mm-hmm. And, oh, I forgot to say I am married. But I got married later in life, so my story is unique too. Everyone has a unique well, story. No, oh my no, God, your story, story counts. Tell us about yeah, your marriage. Yeah. Tell us. Oh, you're well, in charge for God's sake. I really I know Ron, and he's a wonderful, wonderful. Oh, man. Right. Well, that's Ron. Ron's a wonderful man. Yeah, I just never. I, I was always a career person. And I just never felt any. I mean, I would fall in love and have deep crushes, and you know, all of the <sighs> things that normal people do. But I just never felt like I needed to be married, and I didn't have that yearning to be a parent. Because you know, they kid, babies wake up early. And cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So I just, I didn't feel any need to marry the wrong person. And for me, it just didn't happen until later on. And then when it happened, when you're, when you're with the person you're supposed to marry, everything is easy. All that wondering, what is he thinking? What did he mean? You know, that just, yeah, it's gone. Yeah. You left it. You got married because of Michael Jackson. Okay. Oh no, that's just a whole other show. I know, but I just love that But that's wonderful. Just (laughs) Do you know you know about this? Don't. No, that's no, another episode. No, that, no. We'll tell you. After it's just a, it's just like we'll, the, we'll the strangest. How did you meet story that yeah, you'll ever? It is pretty. Here, come back next. Week I was for a that. witness. We're keeping secrets from our audience now. <laughs> I was know. a yeah. witness at the Michael Jackson criminal trial, and my husband was the prosecutor. Yeah. So oh, if I hear that story again, so he no, he made yeah, a good living yeah, basically, well, and that was attractive. No, prosecutors don't make very much money at all. There's no money exchanged in a in a criminal trial. Oh, it's the state versus big mistake. Yeah, yeah, because. Yeah, the people don't pay them to go to jail. They don't <laughs> but say, I was a career thanks, person a who didn't bucks. need to marry someone who had money. I had my own money. He has a very successful career. But it's it's a whole other story. The point is, I was someone that didn't really feel that in my 20s, that need that a lot of women my mm-hmm. age were feeling like. Well, you were a career person. I was more career-oriented. You, I wanted you, you to do just, my own you thing. You were all running all over the place doing reporting and working for the magazines and doing premier radio network. My gosh. Yeah, and I just didn't want to have someone waiting for me or dependent upon me or hurting someone's feelings when I wasn't available for this or that. I yeah. kind of wanted to just do my own thing. And you're an aunt to many children. 
Well, I'm I'm more many, of a mentor. Many happy children. I really only have one yeah. nephew, and he's the most perfect boy in the world. Uh, <laughs> I'm more of a tormentor to my nephews. <laughs> <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> oh, tormentor. Oh, tormentor. I get it. It's more wordplay. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, that Danny, I thought good. you had trained we're, me better than this. We're going to move quickly here. We're very moving good. quickly. All right. So I want to know if you learned, because I also make documentary films, if if you learned more than you- Vastly more. Yeah, because that's what, <laughs> what happens, right? right? That's yeah. why we go on the journey. Yeah. I, by the end of the journey, I'd absorbed so much information, and a tiny amount of it I squished into the documentary, kind of like icing, when you're icing a cake, just a little bit can come out at the end. And that's the, the best part, right? The sweetest tasting part. But I had so much left over that I wrote a companion book to go with it. And that still didn't fit all of it, but I really my focus was to try to collect as much information as possible and boil it down to a couple of great pieces of advice that anyone could implement right away and improve their relationship. And we have that. Mm. We're going to cover that in this show, too. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But your film's a chick magnet, though, right? I, it's, I'm finding that out. Yeah. So it's like it's better <laughs> than a way, dog. Let, <laughs> magnets don't like to be called that, <laughs> chicks. Yeah. L let me ask you this. Where did you meet these two knuckleheads? I've known Doug Williams uh, since 2000-ish. We both worked together on a TV show called the, Mi Mi the Mind of the Married Man. Oh, Almost ah. messed that up. Yeah. Ah. Doug's an actor and a comedian, and yes. we became good friends and have stayed in touch ever since. And worked. then we worked together on the Bernie Mac show. Yeah. Ah. We have a, you know, like a history. His, and, yeah, uh, history. You know, I've always admired Roger because... Uh, He's, you know, you can live vicariously through him as a married man because some of the things that he sends me and the pictures and postcards. <laughs> have to be deleted immediately. Christmas cards are really interesting. <laughs> I have to delete them and hide them from the kids. Yeah. Yeah. The good yeah. thing I'm open and honest with my wife. I mean, Roger will force you to be open and honest with your wife. That, you know, Honey, you got to see this. Right. That, 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 that's that's, that's an that's interesting question for, for married guys with single friends. Like... Do the wives hate the single friend because he's showing you stuff that you shouldn't be looking at and aspiring well, towards? As long as you're honest. I mean, when you, in my relationship, I had to come up because I wanted to remain friends with Roger. Had, had I not wanted to remain friends, then I could have just, you know. But I wanted to be friends with Roger because you never know when he's going to hit really big. Which I'm hoping <laughs> so, because he works on a lot. I think it's of happening. I put too much yeah. work into that relationship. <laughs> right. so. yeah. well, What's the payoff, like, right? Bill <laughs> Maher said, "I have friends in this town I haven't even used yet." Yeah, <laughs> See, that's most, another form of grooming. Mo yes, most absolutely. of the pictures are in Thailand, aren't they? Aren't they? Uh, uh, Bali, Indonesia. Yeah, so they're away. So I, I don't think he's. What bad happens? Does here. that I keep the marriage he... exciting <laughs> in, in any way, shape, or form? I, and, He's I, always adopting somebody. No, it, it, always <laughs> adopting somebody. Like, get a goat. Yeah. This is common, though. Get a though. goat for Christmas. I worked on a TV show called uh, The League and Curb Your Enthusiasm with oh, yeah. a producer writer named Jeff Schaefer. And Jeff, I would send him some of my travel photos. And, and eventually he said, my wife said, I can't receive any more of these. <laughs> See, I knew. She shut him I down. I knew that there was some court sort of friction <laughs> involving great. the texts a married guy receives from a single guy. Did Carol Lee um, work on any of those shows? Yes. Yeah. On Curb Your Enthusiasm. No, I swear, I actually yeah. got massaged okay. by a pig. I mean a real pig. <laughs> <laughs> so Rachel has two children by different biological fathers who she intentionally chose for co-parenting with no romantic involvement. Rachel is an expert in platonic partnered parenting as an alternative to conventional marriage. Rachel Hope's debut book, Family by Choice, colon, platonic partnered parenting is the first of its kind. Uh, Rachel, you describe uh, partnered parenting as a social innovation, a historical evolution and a revolution in what a family means. Can you talk about what led you towards your innovative parenting choices? Well, I don't think I'm alone, and there's lots of people who are wondering how they're going to have kids, and maybe they don't have the confidence that they would choose a, a partner, the right partner, that it would last. A lot of us went through divorced families ourselves and don't want our kids to go through that. So this is an alternative to find a, a partner that you match for parenting and build an intact family. And um, I think these families come out with a lot of the same benefits as as a conventional family, but with a little bit less of the risk. Oh. So describe the conversation. Hey, Chad, let's get coffee. Listen, do you want uh, cream in that? Also, how's your sperm? <laughs> exactly. That I mean, sounds yeah. like coffee with David or Crosby. Is the, or is the person <laughs> such a is the person such a great friend that that it doesn't come as a surprise that you that you're kind of like proposing 
that let's make a person. Yeah. Well, I mean, 30 years ago when I first did this, it was more organic. We just started trying to figure out what to do, how to do this. And then later it was known that I did this and I was verifiable. But now I'm getting ready to do it again online. I There's so many different websites that can pair people now. And oh. so for my third and child, I have a new parenting partner that I met on a website, which is cool. really exciting. Is it? It's kind is of it? weird to have like, a self-selected your group that I get to Your third and most perfect child? I yeah, like, I sound like a mad scientist, them? don't I? It's like know. a designer, This, this one will take over so, the world. I have a lot of <laughs> friends that breeder. do the same thing you do, but the courts end up getting involved with my friends. But uh, similar, similar situation, you know, with a lot of my yeah. homies. Right, where they're, where they're the dad, but they're thing. not, like, they've what, never really how been. Do, how do the children... Uh, well, where they get together how and they hook up in there. Your two right, right, child's right. boys uh, or yeah. girls? Or? Yeah, my son is 29. Son's my daughter just turned 11. Oh, so when are you going to explain it to them? Well, they know what's going I, on. <laughs> when are you going to explain it? 29, yeah. 11, and now you're going to have another and baby. And then my cryo-frozen embryo is, like, six days old. Well, yeah. Why wouldn't you have your third baby with the father of one of the previous two babies? I keep picking really established proven people who are older and both of my baby daddies are older gentlemen that just wanted to be one and done or i would have had more oh. with them but well, they're really you be fulfilled. dating again uh, me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you say mating or dating that, I meant to say so mating. when you go <laughs> online looking for sperm what oh, how how do you know when to swipe right like what are you looking for <laughs> Oh, well, bad choice of words. Yeah, really. Yeah, I don't really. think you can do that. What, on what, what qualities are you looking for? Well, it depends. I mean, I think uh, you have to find a person that's a good match for your particular value system. I think that's really important. That is mm. a solid basis. But I, I think people have to get to know each other safely online, just like any mm -hmm. other dating. And uh, there's best practices. But then it takes at least a good long year of very, very clear um, discussions about what the roles will be and who's doing what and well, just um, getting to know the do person. these fathers yeah. stay in the picture or the, do they ideally oh, yeah that's their so each of them does oh okay so yeah, it's yeah. not it's not it's one. not just oh, i need so your sperm, 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 sperm no it's really the, okay, the, so it's, they're gonna it's, have a dad really, well, that's what separates this, you from yeah. a lot of people oh. I know. yeah this yeah. is yeah. about the picture they're gonna stick around that's amazing that's what's so interesting because we all know that story a lot but this is really different single parenting is really 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 hard there's heroic people doing it but whenever possible to have you two parents, it's the best for kids. You need yeah. seven. And the best for parents. So there's guys that would love to be a dad, but also don't want to be in a relationship. Yeah, for lots of different reasons. Okay. I went into like a co-parenting courtship with like 30 different people for like four years before I got Drew. And um, That's longer than the hockey season. I know, I was thorough. <laughs> I really I really met everybody in LA. And um and there, there are lots of different reasons. People who are uh, invested in their career didn't want to settle down and pick a romantic partner, wanted to stay single, but also was ready for kids. Mm. Um, or they're, you know, gay and lesbian people are finding ways that they can, you know, they, they can, can have a family. Sure. Yeah. And what are the most common questions that you've received from your children? Oh. oh. Um, are you going to have more kids? I want a brother or sister. Aww. I mean, that's, I get oh. nagged that a lot. Uh -uh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so. Great. What's the yeah. parking like at your place on Father's Day? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> the valet. That's hilarious. She hires a valet <laughs> service. Hilarious. Hey, Doug Williams. <laughs> the more Doug, the better. All the, the families. Doug Williams. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, how are the other, uh, well, I have to ask a question too. How are those my segues gentlemen's <laughs> families accepting of you and the circumstance? Obviously they must have, or your life would be a living hell. Well, yeah, I guess that's also why I picked really mature, well-developed, established people to be Whose relatives the parent. Were dead. <laughs> well, <laughs> who who had already proven themselves, and we're no, getting a lot I understand of questioning. That. You know? I understand that. Yeah. yeah, I like I like those those mature guys. You know? Okay, well, um, it, it, such as how, your, how such, did, such as yourself. Yeah. yeah yeah, <laughs> I'm not mature yet. Yeah, try Trust working me. with them. Trust me on this. Yeah. Maturity is you not want to my throw forte. Your no. uh, it's, well, it just it's just very interesting to me that all of the relationships are created with such circumstance, but it's really no different than any family, because Absolutely. all the relationships and and uh, situations with any family, they're they're all very complex and require a lot of understanding to really succeed. 
And, right, right. Yeah. And I, I found it really a relief to be able to just think about what was going to be the best interests of my kids and not have to be thinking, oh, romantic this, romantic that. And I didn't know anything. Most, you know, about most children that. come into the world with less parental vetting. So mm -hmm. right. So there's that. Or none. We're going to move on none. for a moment. Well, my, my <laughs> or none. none. Doug Williams is a stand-up comic and favorite. actor who worked with Roger on the Bernie Mac show, and he created, hosted, and produced the stand-up comedy series Stars Network's Martin Lawrence Presents First Amendment Stand-Up. Great show. Yes. Among many other shows. You seen it? Roger, tell us what we're going to expect to see when we watch the film about Doug's, uh, in, Doug's wisdom that's included therein. Doug is kind of a modern day f a prophet, uh, I, found, right? I discovered, and it was kind of an experiment to interview anybody, it's an experiment, you never know what you're going to get, right, as a documentarian, you kind of just roll the dice, and, but I knew these guys, I had a good feeling that what they were going to give me was going to be good and a little bit contentious, which mm -hmm. is what it turned out to be. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah, it was, very, very, very contentious, I mean, our relationship has been contentious, I mean, uh, you know, we started off with a domestic violence incident, and then once we got past that, I mean, everything was just kind of downhill. <laughs> that's not in your routine. That's, that's, that's the truth, though. <laughs> that's that's, that's true. Really, yeah, I'm not lying. Because that we could had be a, funny if you said it on stage. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the truth, though. We, uh, we had, so the cops uh, were called? Well, if that don't yeah, beat everything. We really are. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. That don't beat all. Yeah, we did. Uh, we uh, we. He called the cops. He called the cops. Well, we had uh, <laughs> we had a domestic violence incident. I had to do a year of those classes with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, oh. we did, okay. and we had to do a year of those classes. But uh, they they actually saved our marriage. I mean, because through those classes, wow. uh, you know, which was mandated by the, they were mandated by the state of California. It was the state of California versus Doug Williams. But anyway, <laughs> through those classes, are you glad uh, you made that phone call? Uh, yeah, it, it <laughs> saved our relationship. But through those classes, we actually learned. How to coexist with each other? How to you know de-escalate? Mm, uh, because we're fr from from two different places. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama, the South. I'm used to women being submissive and not as talkative. She's from the South Bronx, Puerto Rican, <laughs> in your face. You know, grew up fighting her brothers, and it just was you know like gas and oil when we met. Mm. But it was passion. Though. How did you passion. meet? That's love. Yeah. <laughs> That's love. Uh, we you, actually uh, so met on love. the set of the Nutty Professor. I was working with Eddie Murphy and. Uh, and uh, Dave Chappelle, and she was a background actress, and we met on that, and it just kind of took off. One thing about, you know, I loved about her was just her passion, and, you know, we would just make love any place in the elevator and car and then go to the, am I can you too cool much it for an business? hour at least here? I mean, <laughs> maybe I'm putting too much out there. But. And you didn't have to bring a covered dish? <laughs> <like Alabama? laughs> no. But, uh, you know, as Roger pointed out in the, in, in the, in the video, sometimes you – you have things like uh, sex and those things, they take over before you get to know a person mm. and before you get to, you know, see what the person about is Thank about, God. their background and these type of things. And then, so we had to get to those things. And once we got to those things, we were, you know. But it says a lot for both of you that you were willing to make those strides and to work on that. A lot of people just like it's you know even when the cops come they're still like well she well, well she this and he this and whatever but you guys both went oh well, okay that, that those are steps too far let's yeah, figure well, out because I, I love him I love her how can we I think we, he said well, it all well, we, we, we separated we separated for a year that's but for that's healthy yeah yeah, yeah. no we after worked the, on after the incident after the incident and then uh, we worked on one another separately and then we I got love back did you have children we have two boys did you have children then no no uh huh. This and is pre-marriage. Yeah. Right. All right. When we come back, we're going to find out yeah. what what they what what work they did and and how it's how it's working out long term, and how they're working as parents together and as a family together. But we're going to break for this commercial. And we'll be right back. I wouldn't miss this for anything. Come back. <laughs> so my son just got a tattoo. Hey, we're Renee. And Adrian. And we are the, the Outlandish, Outlandish Historians. Historians. We're sisters, nerds, and lovers of all things history. Except bell bottoms. Keep that in the past. Come hang out with us on the Dear World of History podcast, where we'll frolic through time as we chat and geek out over the good, the bad, and the downright ugly history of the world. We promise you don't have to be a licensed historian to travel through time with us. Maritime disasters? Check. Historical serial killers? Check. Glamorous and petty royals? Check and check. You can find us almost anywhere you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter at Dear Historians and Instagram at Outlandish Historians. So chug that drink me bottle and come on down the rabbit hole. It's going to be a wild ride.
Yay! Yay! That, now, Doug, you are lovely. quoted in the film as saying that marriage is a work in progress. I do all the work. She sees all the progress. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel That's that true. marriage is more work for the guy, or do you think both genders feel that marriage is more work for them? Yeah, you know, I, I feel like uh, everybody has their perspective side. You know, you you represent, you know, what you go through in a relationship, and 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 one of the things I learned in counseling was that it should never be about who's right or wrong, it should always be about how can we make this better? And mm -hmm. you have to be deprogrammed to do that because mm -hmm. it's a natural inclination to prove your side or hey, you, you, you weren't supposed to do this, you're wrong, you're wrong. So that was part of the deprogramming process uh, for us is to you know never accuse somebody of being wrong or right, but how can we fix this? It's always a we yeah. approach to how can we make this better? And it's like improv. Improv. Solve improv. the problem together. Yes, and. It, it, it's you say yes, and, not no, but. Yes. Never say no. It's always yeah. yes, yes, dear. and. Yes, and. Yes, dear. You know, it's funny. Before we got married, he didn't want to get married. He fought it and fought it. And Who I does? Thre <laughs> I threatened him, but now he's the happiest he's ever been. And I'm like, I'm going to... You know, get a divorce every other month. <laughs> Isn't Somebody, it interesting that, up, they, that men, men don't want to get married, but then all the statistics show that men who are married are, are healthier. So why is there that resistance, do you think? Healthier, happier, and there there's a 500% decrease in mortality due to accidents. <laughs> yeah, that's probably... Exactly. Really? Women keep them from doing stupid things. <laughs> yes, yeah, like climbing ladders, taking down Christmas lights. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. They yeah, want to keep you for alive for a long time. So right. you can be I there think that, uh, yeah. Because women always say stop when it comes it to makes children. Makes a lot yeah. of sense. You know, yeah. so they keep them from doing that stupid thing, too. Well, we They're all know governor. the statistics marriage rates are down, divorce rates are up, and over time, people become more dissatisfied in their relationships. The appetite for relationship advice is insatiable, resulting in magazine covers touting tip after tip from experts on how to find the perfect mate how to tell if it's going south and how to fix the one that's broken never in history have we expected so much from a romantic partner and experienced such disappointment roger what is the most important piece of useful information that you learned while making this film we promised it at the top of the show so let's yeah. deliver payoff time there is something that i coalesced from everybody I, they were all saying the same thing i realized when i distilled it and that First of all, we expect our partners to want the same thing or need the same thing we need, and they don't. And you have to first learn what it is they need versus what you need. And it, that goes to the masculine, feminine energy. Everybody has a little bit of both inside them, mm -hmm. but men obviously have a larger percentage of masculine on average, but we all have both. When the masculine, when you're in your masculine, for instance, you here's what you should do if you wanna make things better. You don't have to do any of this, if you don't want to be happier. If you want to be happier, I suggest you try this. It's, it costs nothing. It's an experiment. Go home at night. Ask your wife, your woman, your, your, the, the, the feminine partner, how was your day? How are you feeling? And then shut up. Men are terrible listeners. Don't try to fix anything. No solutions. No, I, no, it's like asking for a consultation. She doesn't want your consultation. Just listen and emote and go, oh, uh, and, right. Dave right. and, and Doug, <laughs> what, what is your routine? Oh, yeah, Doug. What? You... For real? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can learn that sequence and it doesn't have to necessarily be in that order. Because they just want you to pitch the ball underhanded. Yeah. yeah. And then they'll knock it over yeah. the park. So that's the it's setup. It's T-ball. It's and just T-ball. You run the first for them, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's about 15 minutes per night. It's like a, a relationship. It's a vitamin that the feminine needs for to be satisfied. And if you don't provide it, if you're the masculine part partner, and you don't provide that, there'll be unhappiness, frustration, and you'll pay for that. Well, it's, doesn't it boil down to nurturing that, that we each have to nurture each other? In varying and, and degrees. That, and that is what you do for somebody that you no, love, somebody it, it, it boils who's your down best friend. To me, is it? Women have a checklist. <laughs> and you have to hit that checklist. The problem is that we can't hit those checks all the time. So I always tell my wife, pick out two or three that you really need, mm -hmm. yeah. and I'll knock those out Circle consistently. Them. The Circle rest them. of them, I'll get back to them. That's, yeah. that's why. Because right? right? a good baseball player only has to be right three times out of ten to have a good season. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the things that uh, what I've noticed is what, what makes my husband the most upset is if it, it feels to him like he has the inability to make me happy. He, he gets really angry if he's been trying to make me happy and he's completely missed. Bamboozled. Yeah, so so when you recognize that it's sometimes that your husband's frustration isn't because he, he hates you or he's mad at you, it's that he, he was trying to satisfy you and it's not working. That mm -hmm. So the times that he does, 
let him know. Help you him know. out. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I've yeah, been married for 34 years, yeah. the most of any of you. And I'll tell you, the secret to a good marriage is a bad memory. Yeah. <laughs> you just forget. I mean, my wife feels like she lives with her best friend who forgets everything she says. Don't keep score. You know, mm-hmm. uh-uh, don't <laughs> keep score. Yeah, there, there's no score. Exactly. And, and, when you're, and when you're having an argument, no one always anything and no one never anything so when you you're going to try and push someone into a corner and say you always this and you never that like the only thing we always do is breathe and we never and that, so those accusations first of all they're not true but you can say i get frustrated when your stuff is everywhere uh because i don't know what i can throw away or mm-hmm. what i need to put into piles for you to sort through like it just makes me frustrated but make i statements it, it, it's mm-hmm. obvious as you, long as you're not saying you make me feel frustrated replace or you, you make me feel replace angry. you with i yeah exactly. right that, that's, right that's big the film teaches us that the two most important and un, undervalued interpersonal skills are listening actively which you just talked about doug oh, yep. and expressing gratitude um so so let's talk about Daily, daily, yeah. Vocalize. Yeah. You must vocalize daily some form of "I really appreciate what you do, who you are, how you do." It doesn't matter. Just some version of that mm-hmm. every day. You've got to say it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And if it if it's crossing your mind, like, "Oh my God, he's so handsome," say it. You know, because mm-hmm. if you're married to the guy, it probably crosses your mind often that he's cute or or that you appreciate the way he says or does. Like, so if it's crossing your mind, say it out loud. There, there's another counterpoint too that I should mention, which is the, what the the uh, the feminine needs to accept about the masculine, okay. and it's a counterpoint to the listening, the active listening. Part of listening is being present; it's showing you're present, putting taking the phone and putting it on airplane mode, making eye contact, and listening. Right. Mm-hmm. The the counterpoint is that you, the feminine has to understand that the masculine needs to disconnect sometimes, and you know you have some masculine inside you as well, and sometimes you need to disconnect. The way to disconnect is to announce, honey. I'm going to go golfing with my friends. And it, when you announce the disconnection, also announce when you're going to reconnect. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing you for dinner at 730. Let's so go now, out for dinner at 7. Now she knows. She feels safe. She feels secure. She knows you're disconnecting, which she's expecting because she knows that you orbit between these two poles. Mm-hmm. And she knows when you'll be back. And mm-hmm. don't be late. And you have to reinforce that with, but should you call, I will answer the phone. No matter what, you will always be able to get in contact with me. There will never be a dead zone in this disconnect. On that golf course? Ah, Are you kidding me? Okay. Yeah, but that's, that's good, the though. feminine that's should good. not abuse this privilege and and overcall. Right. Or <laughs> right. over expect. Right, exactly. Don't expect more than 15 minutes a night of listening. Otherwise, this precious <laughs> How's resource. Your How's your putting? How's your putting? How's your putting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this Dr. John Gottman discovered Rachel. there is a five to one rule for happy relationships. To keep a relationship healthy, we need to express five positives for every negative. So if I say to my husband, your stuff is everywhere, I have to say you're handsome five times before I get to say your stuff is <laughs> everywhere <laughs> again. Only <laughs> you tall, good looking stuff. <laughs> your stuff is everywhere. <laughs> Only if you want to have a stable Long rate relationship. I do. Mm-hmm. I do. So Horse, then, horses do. I mean, also negative behaviors are rolling your eyes, sighing, uh, as as well as the <laughs> obvious things like anger and yelling. All of those count as a negative, mm. right? All the positive positives are touching on the arm, a, a kiss on the forehead, holding hands, yeah. flowers, a new a new Ferrari. Oh, those are all equal <laughs> in their goodness. Those are all the flower equal? and the Ferrari are in the same. <laughs> yes, it's one. Thing you've done for the other person yeah and that's right. what counts it's the number of of times you did something positive so you want to hit five 20 is even better mm-hmm. yeah sure but yeah. you don't want to drop below five or the relationship tends to become unstable according to john <laughs> see in our yeah. marriage counseling i mean they summit they I mean, because we take a bible-based uh marriage counseling right and what they say which is similar to what you're saying is you're supposed to season your words before you serve them to your oh, partner. You have to nice. season. Oh, yeah. So what if you say <laughs> the endearments often, like sweetie and honey, if you just get in the habit of saying those endearments, does, yeah. is that helpful? Season and well, I say like, hey, sweetie, take your use... bras off the balcony. <laughs> yeah, hey, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I, always, I always precede it with, hey, sweetie. Right. Hey, sweetie. And that gets her attention. So how? So here's a quick question. I, I love the Ferrari line because I think Chris Rock at the yeah. Oscars didn't he have? Uh, he was talking about Ford, Ford versus, versus Ferrari. Ferrari. He mm-hmm. says, "I've got a Ford and I've got, have, I have a Ferrari. Not even close." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, this is this is a trick question, Roger, because this our show is called Things I Found Online. So how is technology and the internet impacting a marriage and our expectations? Oh boy, uh, terribly, because we we <laughs> we like to have fewer choices. The ideal number is three. When we have more than three choices, we get anxious and start to think, "We, I made the wrong choice. I shouldn't have chosen. I sh- uh, chosen. I should wait longer." Mm-hmm. Three is perfect, right? It's like uh, there were the three. There were three bears, right? <laughs> There's uh, ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise. Uh, it, once you go beyond a certain number, it's too much. And it's now when you've got dating apps like Tinder, suddenly you've got infinite yeah, choices yeah. well why would you stop and, and focus and try with one person yeah, when you five can... days of the week has already always thrown me it throws <laughs> I can, don't tell, can't don't tell him <laughs> it throws a loop into your ability to, to be satisfied with what you have it makes it much harder is it also is it also true that you're all you're watching other people's relationships in real time and you're and you're comparing what you have to what how happy they look or where they got to go, or how yeah. much money it looks like that he makes sure. or she makes, or what? yeah, and they don't. Do no. Their lives are horrible, but but <laughs> yeah. they're lying. Uh, Facebook, it's, it's it's the great depression right, making machine because you you can't possibly match up to how great. Right, right now, it looks like I'm the most popular guy on on social media and in, in the media because all of a sudden I'm doing a lot of interviews and things because I've got a film being released. Mm-hmm. I'm not nearly this popular as it seems, but if you looked at this little slice. You'd think, wow, this guy's great. Yeah, so correction, talent, he is you're that talent. popular in Indonesia. I'm sorry, I had to throw <laughs> that in. He's very been, popular in uh, third world. Lots Lots of photography Bali there. is wonderful. Yeah. Bali. Favorite <laughs> island so ever. One of, the, one of the things that I, I know. That, that I saw in the movie is they, they talk about attraction. And whenever you hear about the effect of biology on attraction, the studies identify our subconscious desire to mate with healthy genes. But love and sex are not just about reproduction. Or are they even when they're not? I love it when you talk oh, like wow. that. Everything I could fill a blue book on that. Yeah, everything because, boils down to reproduction. Everything we do, every emotion or thought or distraction that we have, is a way for our bodies to keep us distracted, so we'll keep reproducing. Even if we're not breeding, even if we're just in love and we want to build a life with somebody. Yeah, well, it maybe didn't result in the ultimate goal of your genes, but that's what it's there for. You're saying the initial instinct was there. Everything that you're doing is what evolved in on the African savanna to deal with that environment to keep you and your tribe right. reproducing mm-hmm. successfully. But mm-hmm. I, I, Which proves I that think all that life started in it's Africa. Primal. I, I understand that it's pri- <laughs> I, it, oh, the absolutely. roots are primal. But don't you feel like we're here on Earth to do more than reproduce? We're here to like what? To build relationships <laughs> and and share love and That's knowledge and humor and I music. Think those are for reproduction, though. That's yeah. where the social evolution comes yeah. in. That we were talking about earlier, that that you um, you you reproduce initially, and once you get comfortable with that, and God knows we have, we're overpopulating the earth right now. We then evolve to the arts and the finer things right. in life. Well, we have the free crafts. time. You, know, you you start making yeah, yeah. utensils and yeah. and all those things, and that I can remember from my past lives. Uh, it, See, that's biblical you know, too. That's but, biblical. That's the whole basis of you know that you when know, you look at. I'm a. We're very spiritual. Adam and Eve, and you yeah, put there, and, yeah, you, don't, yeah. and you know, it's all yeah. biblical. A lot of begetting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a lot is. of begetting. Like yeah. a lot of begetting and getting. Yeah. Yeah. Don't look too close at the Old Testament because you get to have hundreds of wives and concubines and and. and that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Jesus. those guys live to they live to eight hundred. <laughs> yeah. It says so. Yeah. So it I must read be too true. much of the Old Testament. I get stoned. <laughs> but when, whenever there were multiple marriages in throughout history, there must have been like a lot of like um, calling of males that were slightly l- less superior so that they, they, they must have just been like the, the top guys grabbing all the women and all the other dudes just like in the desert somewhere going, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not so they ended quick, up Jola. <laughs> but I, I, they ended I, up bowling. But I also think that a lot of the reason for multiple wives was that women would die in childbirth and then you'd still need other women to be there to raise the kids and to say like, it oh, doesn't matter whose kid it is, I'm, we, we're going to all raise these well, I think I think 80% the, of it was fun, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe really? that other stuff, can, but it's fun. And I can't, I can't, I can't believe that, that it wasn't. Amen. Otherwise, <laughs> why, would you, why would you keep and on? And I'm batting 300. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about the guy. There's a guy in your film, I'm not sure what his name is, but there's a guy in your film who says Don that, Blanquito. All right. No, no, no. no? Correct. Let's, wow. We're going to come to him okay. in a second. The guy who says that women are attracted to different types of men at different times of the month. Oh, I'm going to say Ryan. to that, just no. I've had crushes that lasted for decades. Month in and month out, women are pretty <laughs> over men blaming our behavior on our periods. 
Thoughts. Period. <laughs> Period. That's Christopher Ryan. Yes, he wrote a book called Sex at Dawn and most recently Civilized to Death. He, and he, <laughs> it's, great it's his new book. Yeah. 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 And what they found, these are what they've done scientific studies where they've asked women to fill out checklists and who they're attracted to at, at time of day. Or okay, let me give you an example. There was a study, it's called the T-shirt study, where they took 40 women and 40 T-shirts that men had worn and asked the women which T-shirt, when they sniff it, smells the most attractive. They then took all the results, and they found that the ones that they found attractive were the men that they had immune systems that were the most dissimilar to, the most different from. If they had similar immune mm. systems, they were not attracted. Mm. Because if you have a baby with someone whose immune system is similar to yours, the offspring has less chance for survival. You want to have multiple immune systems to pull from for the baby to have a better chance at survival, and that is what equaled passion. And they got all that from smelling the shirt? Yeah, yeah. from pheromones. Wow, and, and that, that sounds now, like a Tide they, would they, commercial. Would they rub <laughs> coffee beans between their fingers between smells? Oh, that's so How old could they That's old school. That's yeah. old school. cleanser. How could yeah. they, well, cleanser. I, that's what I do when I smell yeah. T-shirts. You yeah. can tell. They sure can tell bet. immediately sure who bet. they were attracted to chemically. Yeah. It's called a chemical Pheromone. match. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. when you meet someone, you feel intense passion, yep. or in the kiss, you feel, wow, it's because... You have met someone who is a very close chemical match or a dissimilar immune system. And it's Did you do that before you chose the sperm? You mean? Did you smell the shirts and stuff? I made sure they didn't stink okay. to me. That's, yeah. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people end up in passionate relationships with somebody who's not good for them. That it wouldn't be a good match for raising kids. Mm -hmm. So, you know, balancing that out, I think, is how we aren't just human animals, but we're souls. Right. I mean, we look at people on TV and in movies and we fall in love with them and we've never smelled them. No, we should smell each other more. I One think day. we're projecting. Maybe dogs have I that. Think yeah, I was going to say. Maybe, maybe we should learn something they from don't do, dogs. They, until they've smelled that butt, they don't even, <laughs> it's, not, exactly. it's not even a conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, dogs, that's how they get information. They're just yeah. like, mm -hmm. oh, nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah. How does your crotch smell? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you lost money recently. Oh, this one's had a lousy day. I'm not talking to this one. Okay. So Dina's going to jump on my here. I just, well, I just wanted to ask. Oh. I just want to confirm something with Raj. So it's women. Whoa! Ooh, that mic was a, drop. Dina that just was a broke mic drop. Mic drop. Absolutely. She done. So it's women that um, <clears throat> for women it's important to like pick up a certain scent, not like for each gender to do so to the other. I it's think sub, so. It's it works for both ways. Both yeah. ways. Oh, okay. And it's subconscious. You just feel it as. Wow, I'm attracted to this person, and I don't, I don't know why. Right, yeah. But your body is doing a lot of processing that's beneath your conscious awareness. Yeah. There's another study that's fascinating. They went, they took, went to a strip club and had all the strippers fill out their tips hourly, and then they you said tips, right? Yeah, their tips, that's okay. <laughs> money that men gave them. And you they, can edit that out. Wow, well, you can edit that. They out. They put it on a chart she for the whole month, drinking. and at the end of the month, they looked at it and compared it to their cycle. Their, and they found that their tips increased to the highest level when they're ovulating, ovulating yeah. and mm -hmm. drop to the lowest during Whoa. their period. And somehow mm -hmm. men sensed when they were most fertile wow. and were throwing money at them. The, they don't know, That's right? That's nuts. This that is, is, no, a, no, that, that, no, so no. the strippers took a poll? They, <laughs> <laughs> Well, they have apps now. <laughs> Weezy said that's nuts. That's, I think she's got the wrong club. I've seen that. That's two no. good puns, <laughs> double the, puns. <laughs> the reason wow. I asked, to, I just wanted to make sure is because I love sniffing my husband. I'll like put my nose right up into his armpit, but he doesn't do the same to me. So I guess it's just like, that's like how it is later. in our relationship. Well, no. you're the one that's going to grow the baby and it's yeah. more important, more important to you. Right. To him, mm -hmm. his, he, as long as he is fertilizing as many potential opportunities as possible yeah, and he did that yeah, oh, well, yeah. so took it, the opportunities women right. are much more sensitive to it I, I do the same thing so my question is doug do you yeah all the time i mean yeah well, yes dear I did it before we came in oh here. was that you oh, yes. yeah yes. <laughs> was there possibly yes, any other that answer was, than that yes was me this morning <laughs> see, yes. there, there's a, there it is right there yes see how you it's I like improv it, wow. like you said yeah. you just go with it you don't you don't yeah. stifle it yes. i thought and it was the dog <laughs> There's a lot going on that we're not aware of. That's what the Jeez, big blessing yeah. is. Why not? Do your hair smells terrific? So we're what I want to know: Who here has heard of wedding shaming? <laughs> wedding shaming. What? Yeah, it's it's a hole of the internet <laughs> that you can fall through. And Dina has brought it to my attention, and I will. I can't unthink this. There's a whole group of people online in different pockets of the internet that just live to shame people's weddings. 
And here's a link to there's an article that Dina sent my way. So Dina, go ahead and tell so us what's going I'm on here. I'm just going to briefly explain what this is and then I'm kind of really interested to hear what the panel what the panel's thoughts are on it. So basically there's um a lot of shaming, a large shaming community on the internet, mostly on Reddit and on Facebook, um, in certain Facebook groups. Um, wedding shaming comes in basically two flavors. The first one is um, if your wedding is deemed, you or your wedding is deemed tacky or like lacking self-awareness. And the second one is- Self-awareness for who? That's is the most dis of them. Disrespectful. <laughs> and um, disrespectful is usually like, if if people involve, this is where things get hairy. If people like involve somehow a dead relative in their wedding, the shaming community will pounce on that. This is bullying. Like there was a woman who put her father's ashes into her nails that she had done for her wife. So that was like a big deal. Oh. Um, oh well, that's so so that's essentially what is wedding this? shaming is. Real quick, just my opinion on the whole shaming thing is I don't I don't have a problem with it. Um, I think there's something kind of healthy about it. Like there's, I'm in several shaming groups and people will come. <laughs> Proudly. Yes. People will what? come into the group and post stuff and ask to be shamed because they feel like it helps them keep like a healthy sense of self. Like you don't get too, you're not like too full of yourself. Right. Are those high yeah, heel I crocs? I use whips for that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm going to get Is you. shaming the new quilting? I'm shaming. All right. So <laughs> wedding Amish. shaming coincides with internet inspired oh. seismic shifts in the wedding industry. Weddings have become significantly more expensive fed by our knowledge that they live forever online social media is impacting wedding culture and wedding expectations in turn a wedding that falls short of the idealized visions that play out on youtube pinterest and instagram is more susceptible to unfair criticism but isn't it a hypocritical construct to flood a ceremony inspired by love with so much hate thoughts it's, I, I would as a filmmaker as a documentarian I feel like I am and have to be non-judgmental about all things and all behaviors and all preferences and choices as long as they're not hurting anybody. And if she wants to take her father's dead ashes, who is it hurting, right? He's right. dead. Something yeah, loose. Unless they sacrifice him in front of everyone. That's, that's almost different. a tribute. Well, some of the wedding shaming is, is the, <laughs> there's, grill him. if there's if there's like a, a text circle with, with the bride and all the all the bridesmaids, and she's asking ridiculous things of them, those are the types of things that go viral. Uh, well, if it's a bridezilla, go ahead, Danny. I, I, uh, you're... Yeah, it's yeah. it's segueing right off of what you're saying, and it's it's kind of a duh statement, but uh, I'm good at that. Mm -hmm. uh, ha ha I don't know what percentage, let's say half at least of the internet is people putting everything they do in every part of their life online, and there's no necessity for it. It's look at me, look at me, look at me, here's this, here's that. Then people say, oh, look at this video that I found. Like, if you're putting all that stuff out there, it, it's, you know, the bottle goes out and the bottle comes back to shore. It's like, don't it doesn't need to be tweeted it doesn't need to be out there but we've been doing that long before mm. uh, in the internet we've been doing that with uh, reality TV right. I was addicted to bridezilla mm -hmm. or you know marry the, the the dress or find the dress mm. we practically eloped and mm -hmm. my mother found my wedding dress in the garbage can so that's an entire story. But it was discount. That's, that's a whole other episode. <laughs> yeah. No, it was free. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> well, the garbage can was going with the garage sale. Became, so it dep depends where you shop. <laughs> but I've always wanted a huge wedding. So I've always been addicted to watching mm. these, you know, wow. bridezilla moments and these crazy things. So, I mean, we, we've already been... I guess fine tuned into into uh, social media by way of reality TV. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an appetite, and it, it, like any appetite, can get out of control, right. and the internet can facilitate yeah. out of control behavior. Right, and the internet it, it kind of like draws that that aspect of ourselves where it's like, oh my God, I'm great because look at them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's just. Yeah, it's a it's a back fence sort of like can you that's you're the thing. What I mean, look, someone to, you, it's one thing to look at something and go, oh yeah, and then yeah, then commenting on it and then sh the shaming part of it is what I don't get because that just comes from malice and meanness and if. Uh, but uh, fellow it, comedians used to post the uh, the thing on the deck chair and a shot of their their feet in the Caribbean in the background. Yeah, you fellow know? comedians, and the how about was all humans at the office? You know, and right. they were, and they got to be just. Crazy, and, and we look at something like that, and we don't think, oh, that person's living better than I am, you know, because we've all lived it. Yeah, the whole, yeah. the whole bullying, shaming 
part of the culture is I, it's just I, 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 it's i, I kind of don't there's get also it kind of like we love to build something up and then me. tear it back down so the wedding is sort of like your big showbiz day where the bride is the star yeah for those 24 hours and so when she's in all her glory and and all of her extravaganza and the big show that that all of her minions or or you know her entire bridal party has put on for her and and feeling like a queen it's easy for people to be like oh no i don't think so oh no it's you're, time you're a little for too fancy a thermos of gatorade yeah <laughs> A time for a thermos of Gatorade. <laughs> That's what that time's for. So yesterday on Twitter, what was trending is hashtag wedding fail. So I looked up a few of these and we have a tweet from Jessica. And Jessica! Jessica tweeted, at she the end like... of my sister's wedding, I went to the wedding planner to ask permission to leave my car overnight because I'd been drinking. She gave me a lecture about why marriage is the worst and talked about her divorce for 30 minutes. Hashtag wedding fail. If you hadn't been that drunk, you could have just gotten in your car and left. <laughs> uh, it's a wedding plan. But that's what happens at weddings. Little this is a tweet close. from Robin McNamara. She tweets, I'm a wedding coordinator, and once while assisting one of my brides to literally walk down the aisle in her big, poofy dress, she asks me to pick her wedgie. <laughs> she couldn't reach it. Her dad wasn't going to do it, so she begged me. <laughs> Hashtag, I'll need m more money for that. Hashtag, wedding fail. I, there's no... There's no end to the story. We don't know whether or not she picked. When she said pick your wedgie, I thought it meant yeah. choose it. Like which one do you want? I know. Do you like to no, select no. a wedgie it's for the evening? It. Yes. yes. <laughs> By Seymour Butts. And then we have a tweet from Caitlin Murphy, and this is a classic. It's a as we all know, it's from Friends. The minister says, "I Ross take the Emily," and Ross says, "I Ross take the Rachel." Ooh. Hashtag Ooh. wedding fail. Oops. What a burn. Where and when can we see the truth about marriage? Roger and or Linda Brown, of course, is in the studio. Are, yep. are, oh, we yes. share a publicist. We're actually related through our publicist. Oh, that's nice. The best place to go is to the website, the nature of, uh, sorry, the truth about marriage <laughs> that's dot com. Film. That's my prior film. The truth about marriage dot com. And it has the links, everything you need. Excellent. They can they can get the uh, complimentary book or the, the supplemental the book. Watch the video, see this fabulous couple here oh, in yeah. action, and mm -hmm. see Rachel talking more and more about relationships uh, in this person. Guys, I just want to say, great. Roger's a, a, such a great director. I mean, uh, he really has his own style, and uh, it was just a pleasure for us to work with him. And uh, and I say this not just because he's my friend, but he really, really goes above and beyond uh, when he does these documentaries and the, the, the research and the thing. And it's just, you know, we were just honored to be a part of this. Eight Aww. years, eight years to get to the wow. finish line on this wow. one. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. So, see, I can commit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> before, before we go, though, let's talk about the guy, the rap guy from Brazil. Don Blanquito. Yeah, because that is a surprise, that guy. <laughs> Which, so There's a gentleman that I met when I was in Brazil traveling at it for my prior film, The Nature of Existence. It was at a film festival, and I met him there, and we had lunch. And you get a feeling as a documentarian, this person needs to be on camera sometimes. Oh, for sure. And I felt that with him. Immediately, so I flew back four months later and interviewed him. He was the first interview for this documentary, mm -hmm. and he was like my my guinea pig. And I checked back many years later. He had moved to Brazil, learned to speak Portuguese, so he could meet and pick up date Portuguese women and Brazilian women. Sorry, and he lived there and stayed there. And he's, he's been there for you know I think seven or eight years. I checked back a few years later, and he was married with a child. And completely a changed a man. Oh. He, had a, he had a young daughter. and oh, he, that's great. And he was such a confirmed bachelor that yeah. his interview is done in front of a naked girl on a bed behind him, face down. And as a rapper, uh. his song, number one of his songs was Single Forever. The other one yeah. was, was Get That Vagina. Uh, and, and Rio was, and it was the, wow. the Very least romantic. offensive he song. He had an image to maintain. The least offensive to mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely and then did. cut back. He cuts back to him, and it's like there he is with his wife, and she's not letting him. No, I mean she's just like mm, no, and he's like yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just and he's he's they're together, they're happy. They was it's been contentious again. It, yeah, people have to figure out what the the uh, power structure is, mm -hmm. and it takes time. The level of contention. But we're all we're all just seeking happiness, and we're all going to find it. And yeah. the best way to find happiness is to be open to learning and adjusting your behavior as you learn, so that you can acceptance of yourself, right? And what kind of a species you are, who you are as a person, and your partner, because they're not going to change. As the Gottman say, sixty nine percent of all relationship problems are never solved; they're just acknowledged, and then you move on. If so, you've got to get to a point where 
you know what, I accept you for who you are, which is very difficult in our, right. because our culture asks us to behave in ways that are out of sync mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. what's natural for who we are. Mm -hmm. And that's why we all get so frustrated trying to achieve these levels of behavior that are really virtually unreachable. Well, I think that's our really, parents' really genetics really make us who we are. Some, and some and it's to, to meet someone who you can share your life with. Well, I is, is the a, stars line. That's the goal. It's and really if, you, the stars and if you choose out, to be though. single, that's a blessing too. I mean, I, I think that's right. every, we're all different. And that's I mean, the stars lining up as well. Exactly. You're right. So you I want to thank so much our guest, our guest, Roger Nygaard, Rachel Hope, and Doug Williams, and your yeah, lovely wife. Just that, please. Ada Williams. Ada Luz Ada. Pla. I just, yes, I wanted to get that pronunciation and right. So Ada I, Williams. Hey, Here, I'll and make up everyone was so wonderful. In the booth we had and Lane Jerry McFadden. Jerry Mathers as the beaver. <laughs> and Connor Eldridge. Our panel is Jamie Elcroft and Danny Mann. Our producer is Dina Friedman. Our sound engineer is John Maddox. Our webmaster is Bill Filipiak. Our theme music is the coffee song by me, Louise Palenker, and John Maddox. I am Louise Palenker. Thank you, Linda Brown. We will see you next week. Be safe, be well, be kind. Hercules, Hercules. And much rejoicing ensued.